Hey guys, we're gonna get going in a, uh, in another 10 minutes or so, um, just to make sure everybody can hear me okay, and also uh, see my screen, just throw a hand up, please. Awesome. Hey guys, I'm going to uh, I'm going to say this right now too, and 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 I'll repeat it once the the presentation starts. But um, I want you guys to type your questions in real time. So whenever they whenever they pop up, just uh, feel free to to type it into the into the questions menu. I'm going to answer uh, as many questions as I can at the end of the presentation. But you don't have to hold your questions until the end. Feel free to feel free to type them uh, whenever they whenever they pop up.
Hey guys, five minute warning. Uh, we're going to get going in about five minutes. Uh, again, feel free to type in any questions that you guys have in real time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and answer them all or as many as I can for the most part at the end. Uh, and also just throw a hand up if everybody can see my screen and hear me okay. Just throw a hand up just, just so I can see you. Thanks.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Anastasides. I'm an application engineer at Unitronics. And I want to welcome you to our Locked In Learning series. I just want to uh, thank everybody for attending today. Uh, I know that we have um, a good amount of people registered. I'm going to give everybody uh, about one more minute here. Uh, I just wanted to introduce a couple of things for you guys. So uh, I am I'm going to run through a PowerPoint presentation, and then we're going to jump into the software. Uh, at any point, if you guys have questions, feel free to uh, submit them in real time. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to go back and, and try to get through as many as I can. Uh, and just so you don't forget, uh, you don't have to wait until the end of the presentation in order to, to submit your questions. They'll get submitted in order as you write them. So today, we're going to be talking about Visilogic hardware and software. Now, since we don't have any NHL playoff series to enjoy, we wanted to bring you guys a series of webinars that will stretch over four rounds over the course of the next four weeks. You'll see the topics here. This week is hardware and software introduction for the Unistream series and the Vision series. Now, these series of webinars are going to be held on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You'll see the dates below. The Unistream series is going to be handled by my colleague, Zach. Zach, great job on the Unistream series on Tuesday. The Vision series is going to be handled by myself on Thursday. Now, Tuesdays and today's presentations are, are really meant to be uh, introductions into the software and the hardware configuration for these controller series. As we move forward, uh, we're going to get deeper into different topics. So next week, we're going to handle ladder, HMI, and memory. So you guys will get to see uh, the ladder portion of the software environment, how it interacts with the HMI portion. Uh, and also some uh, tricks and tips on memory, how to implement it, how to view how much is left, and so on. After that, we're going to take a look into data logging. Data logging is going to expand on how to keep track and how to store data, how to trend it, uh, how to move different data uh, points to SD cards, and so on. And in the fourth week, we're going to handle communications. Now, communications is going to handle a, a wide range of, of topics, including Ethernet, um, serial, and how to implement remote access with some different utilities that we have and different utilities that are available for you. So what I first want to do is jump into Unitronics as a company. We were established in 1989, and we now have over 1 million installations worldwide. Now, a question that we get a lot is, what kind of industries are you guys in? What industries do you serve? Uh, the reason why we say uh, we're in an infinite number of industries is you can actually use these controllers for a number of, of, of different applications, right? Anything from packaging to food and beverage uh, to pump control to oil and gas. You name it and we'll be able to find you a, a, a way to go about uh, implementing one of our controllers in, in a situation that needs to be automated. We now have over uh, about 160 distributors in over 60 countries. One of the things that I would say separates us uh, from the field in, in a lot of situations is the unified software and programming environment. You can do everything that you'd need right in one software package for the most part. Uh, there's no integration between the HMI portion of the project and the latter portion of the project and what IO is being used and so on. You have one environment to essentially implement all, all the control that you'd have in one system. Uh, and another thing that separates us, no additional cost for the software itself and any support that's needed. So once you have the hardware, even if, I mean, even if you don't have the hardware, you know, you can go ahead uh, and visit our website, download the software. You can give us a call to um, either spec out a system or just see what kind of uh, hardware options you have for an upcoming project. 
So again, just to recap some of the industries, we're in power and energy, food and beverage, pumps, water and wastewater, pharmaceutical, packaging, building automation, and also not mentioned here is the cannabis industry. So anything that, um, anything that's along the lines of extraction and so on, uh, you will be able to implement our con our controllers and, and different PLCs and HMIs for, for control and in, in, in applications like that. So again, to recap, Unitronics offers a complete range of PLCs. Also included in PLCs are VFDs and servos available. We offer powerful software one software package, intuitive, uh, easy to use, friendly, comes with a number of uh, example projects in a library that allows you to, to see how different features and, and uh, protocols can be structured within, within a project, and also utilities that you can use alongside of the software package itself and also outstanding support you guys can feel free to email us call us uh anything that ranges from you know the beginning steps of trying to see what uh controller would be the best fit all the way down to how to implement different types of control i have here a products timeline You'll see that starting in 18, uh, 1989 all the way up to 2019. I just want to point out some of the controllers that we are going to uh, come across today. You'll see in 2002, the standard vision series was introduced. Uh, in 2011, the first sort of large scale uh, HMI was introduced for the enhanced vision that was, that was introduced in 2006. Uh, what I mean by, by larger HMI sizes is you now have a range of 5.7 inch to 12.1 inch touchscreen, whereas before everything was a little bit more uh, compact where you had uh, the PLC, IO, and HMI, HMI all together. In 2014, the Samba was launched. And you'll see in 2019, our, our latest release, the Unistream PLC, which Zach has or had touched on on Tuesday. Okay, so products review. We have four main product lines. We have the Unistream series, the Vision series, right? The Vision series actually has two subdivisions. You have the standard controller and the enhanced controller. You also have the Samba controller and then the Jazz. The Jazz is a uh, two-line ASCII, di ASCII display controller for um, smaller, simpler uh, projects, whereas the Samba, Vision, and Unistream can be implemented for more complex situations. Now, in the Visilogic software package, you have the ability to program vision series units and also Samba units, right? So we're gonna focus on those two controller series uh, today in this presentation. I'm gonna start with the vision series. The vision offers an advanced PLC with a colored touch screen. In the sizes that you see here, 5.7, 7, 10.4, 7, and 12.1 inch, uh, all of these are going to come built in with a PLC and HMI. Any sort of I.O. control, you're going to have a snap-in I.O. configuration that is just going to pop right into the back of one of those controllers. And once it is physically installed, everything is going to act as all-in-one. So you'll have, again, one software package in order to program the HMI, the PLC, and also uh, what the I.O. would be doing in the in the system as well. So some features for these larger size HMI panels, again, sizes range from 5.7 inch all the way up to 12.1 inch. The 12.1 inch and the 10.4 inch is actually the same panel size. 
Uh, the touch screen varies, right? And the reason why the 10.4 inch screen is a little bit smaller is you actually have a number of programmable keys. Um, so depending on the situation, that might be a little bit more useful. Let's just say if you have a situation where uh, you have a number of employees who might have gloves uh, or wearing protective equipment, um, it's a little bit easier to to navigate the HMI with with hard keys as opposed to taking gloves off and touching the screen and so on. You have a high quality touch screen that is colored. You do have the ability for multilingual applications. So if you have an application that might be uh, installed in different countries, you can implement any languages that would need to be uh, accessed into one project. And then you also have built-in alarms. Now you have the ability to build your own alarms, of course, right, with, with HMI design, but we actually have built-in screens that depending on what happens in the project, um, you have the ability to utilize those where, where they are needed. So in situations where you might have a lot of alarms and it gets cumbersome to, to build your own with different HMI displays, you do have the built-in available. From a PLC standpoint, you have a number of different I.O. options, right? Digital inputs, digital outputs, analog in, analog out. Uh, you have high speed options, temperature monitoring options, and also weight measurement available. We do have load cell modules that are compatible with these units. Uh, depending on the configuration itself and what is needed, you actually can expand up to uh, about a thousand I.O. points with these guys. You have auto-tune PID available up to 24 independent loops. Uh, you also have the ability to implement data tables and those can be for uh, recipes, right? If you wanted to read out pre-existing parameters, if you wanted to store parameters to a table, you have the ability to do so. You can do that with local memory and also external memory. You can push that to a micro SD card um, that is fitted into the controller. And that's going to allow you to log, backup, clone to and from, and more. And you also have function blocks for different features available. Now, with the HMI and PLC, you have a number of ports that are going to come on board for communication purposes. This can range from anything from programming the unit to communicating and controlling third party devices. A lot of these newer units are going to come with uh, a mini or micro USB port for programming. Uh, these specific, the larger size panels, right, they're going to come built in with a CAN bus port an isolated 485 or 232 port, depending on jumper settings. And then you also have the ability to add a, an additional serial or ethernet port. Um, now I wanna point out the V700 is actually a controller model and it's the only one in the Vision Series fa family that is gonna come built in with an ethernet port. So you actually would not have to add an ethernet port to a V700, that is gonna come standard with an ethernet port. Any other controller that you'd have in the Vision Series family, let's just say if you needed to implement remote access, especially in times like these, uh, you would have to add an ethernet port to the unit itself. So now over those physical means of connection, you do have a number of protocols available. You have Modbus, serial and over TCP or over ethernet. You have small network management protocol. You have a number of different CAN bus protocols, including CAN Open, CAN Layer 2, UniCAN, and J1939 for automotive applications. If you needed to communicate, let's just say with the building automation system, we do have BACnet, KNX, and MBUS available via gateways. So those would be a second piece of hardware that you would actually communicate to with the PLC, and it can then uh, communicate with anything that you are trying to get at in that building management system and so on. And then you also have function block protocol, right? This is going to be almost like an open protocol where you can teach the PLC a particular language to communicate with uh, a certain device. Um, just to give you a, a little bit of an example, right? Let's just say if you had a barcode reader, you have the ability to build the variable, whether it's a static 
uh, or dynamic variable for which you are trying to uh, read certain codes. Uh, if you were communicating with like, let's just say like a PC based application, you also have the ability to send raw commands to it. So you can receive and also send based on the structure that you build using the function block protocol function blocks. And also some additional features, you have the ability to host a web server with these units. You can send emails and text messages based on the hardware configuration that you have. You have a number of remote access utilities, and the nice thing is, is this can be done over serial and over ethernet. So if you're, let's just say, doing testing, you have the ability to just connect quickly with serial. If you have something really remote, you have the ability to set up port forwarding and be able to access these devices, uh, maybe not from the site that you're on. And 3G and ethernet modem support. So just bumping back up to email and SMS, if you wanted to send text messages, you would have a 3G modem fitted. And we also have the ability to connect to third party ethernet modems in order to send emails. Okay, so those are the larger size panels. Um, the panels that were introduced in 2006, these are, these are the smaller size guys, right? So you have the 3.5 inch touchscreen, the V350, the V130, which is actually a 2.4 inch screen with hard keys, and then the V430, which is a 4.3 inch touchscreen. So these ones are gonna come with built-in IO as opposed to a snap-in configuration. That's what separates uh, those guys from the larger size panels. So some features for the smaller panels. Again, you have a range of sizes, 4.3, 3.5, and 2.4. The 2.4 inch touch, uh, I'm sorry, the 2.4 inch screen is not a touch screen. It is hard key only, right? So you have high quality touch screen, and then you also have the ability to have uh, a unit with pro programmable keys, again, depending on the, the application and situation. Multi-language display and built-in alarms, just like the, the big panels are available. You do have the same I.O. possibilities as you, you have available with the larger size panels. You have digital in, digital out, analog in, analog out, high speed, temperature measurement, and also weight measurement. These are expandable up to only 512 I.O. points, though. So you do have a little bit of a limitation when it comes to expansion. Uh, Auto-tune PID is still the same though. You have 24 independent loops available. You do have the ability to log and pull from tables and that can be local and on an SD card. These units do not have the ability to, um, or do not have the compatibility with USB sticks. So you would have to use, uh, you would have to have a micro SD card inserted uh, into these units. So unlike the Unistream, you cannot just walk up to the face of the panel with a USB stick. And then also uh, most of the same function blocks for, for features would be available. Now, from a port standpoint, the new units are gonna have a mini USB for programming. They're gonna come with a serial port, RS-45 or RS-232, depending on the jumpers that you set. And then you also have the ability to add two ports. So you have the ability to add one serial Ethernet or Profibus port, and then separately a CAN bus port. So depending on what's needed for the application, you can add a CAN bus port and then also one serial Ethernet or Profibus port. Uh, for the most part, you're going to have the same protocol options available. And additional features, these guys can also host a web server and send emails and text messages depending on what's needed for the application. I put this diagram up here. I just want you guys to take a look at how complex some of these applications can be. So you'll see our V1210 unit in the middle here. And based on what is needed for the system you are trying to create, you have a number of different avenues that you can take to connect and communicate with different devices. And this can be uh, done all at the same time, right? So you have the ability, based on the, on the ports that you have 
um, built in or added, right? You can communicate and do a number of different things over Ethernet. You can communicate over RS-485 in a network. You can communicate over a CAN bus network. You also have the ability to expand I.O. Now, the units um, that we're talking about today in the Vision series, right, they're going to have a uh, port on the side that is labeled EXP port. That is for local expansion. So you can communicate uh, with an EXA2X, which can host eight additional IO modules that will allow you to expand beyond what you have on board. If you have a CAN bus port added, you also have the ability to use our remote EXRC1, and that is going to give you another eight IO modules, and those can be incorporated in a network of 60 Unican nodes. So you actually have the ability to 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 get um, high up in the in the number of, of of IO points for a particular project. And again, this can all be done in combination with any devices that you're communicating with over Ethernet or serially, right? So you see barcode readers here, serial, and also over Ethernet. We have our backnet gateway if we're in a building management system. We also have our own VFDs and servos and also third-party VFDs and servos that can be implemented in a project. Okay, so that's a little bit about the 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 hardware for for this uh, family. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into the software a little bit. In the Visilogic software package, you have the ability to define the hardware configuration, and that's set up any I/O, uh, any VFDs you might be communicating with, and so on. Uh, let's just say if you have analog um, inputs coming in and you have some devices that are being controlled via analog outputs, you have the ability to determine what kind of signal type is being used, uh, any sort of filters that you want to implement, and so on. You have a ladder program or a ladder portion of the software environment that's going to allow you to build any sequencing needed for certain uh, applications. You have subroutines available. The HMI portion is going to allow you to build what the user interfaces with, right? So you have the ability to use custom images. You have a full image library that gets downloaded with the software. Any sort of uh, interface that you want to create for the user, that's going to be done in the HMI portion of the software package. So I would say that those are the two main Windows, if you will, in, in, in the Visilogic software, but you also have the ability to implement the built-in alarms so you can create what are going to be the triggers, any sort of conditions that would pull up those internal screens. You can set any languages in your string library. Now, you're not limited to just being able to switch between languages. You also can switch between different units. Anything that you basically want to replace in the same exact spot with something else, the string library can be used. And also data tables. Data tables are going to allow you to create logs. You also have the ability to import and export to Excel. You have the ability to create trends on screen. That's going to allow you to graph any data that you might be tracking or monitoring. So let's just say if you have pressure or temperature and you wanted to see that versus time on a trend on the HMI that the user can scroll back and, and maybe take a look at points that might not, um, maybe maybe point to, to, to different issues that might be in the system or, or some odd behavior. You have the ability to, to, to create a graph on screen for the user to see. And then also the web server feature. The web server is going to allow you to host a web page with information from the project that you choose to display. Now, also included with the Vision Series hardware are a number of smart utilities that are external to Visilogic. So Visilogic is going to allow you to program everything that you need in the actual application. The smart utilities that we offer will allow you to do different things regarding communication, right? So let's just say if you needed to access a unit remotely, you have remote access, which is one-to-one, -one, or remote operator, which is going to allow you to monitor multiple controllers. 
You also have tools that will allow you, let's just say if you have an application in the field, if you needed to send a project file to a customer or somebody that you might not want to have the actual source code for, you have the ability to compress files and they can download a utility from the website and they actually have the ability to change the project that's running in the controller without being able to see what the actual background project is doing. And you then have uh, data export, which allows you to pull off information from the controller, uh, either automatically or by forcing a call to it. And then you have features like UniDDE and UniOPC server, which allow you to communicate directly uh, to and from Excel and also OPC clients. SD card suite is one that I, I'm, I'm going to touch on right now, but we're going to... Uh, probably expand on it more in the in the data logging uh, session. SD card suite is gonna allow you to format a card in a way that is gonna build the folder structure that is needed for um, applications where you're pushing information to the SD card. So it's gonna give you the predefined table uh, folder structure for any sort of tables that you're pushing, any log files that you're creating, any clone files that you're either pulling or saving and so on. So again, these are available on the website uh, and I'll show you where they're, where they're located uh, at the end of the presentation, but these are external to Visilogic, but utilities that you can use with Vision Series hardware. Now to dive into the Samba series. Again, the Samba series is also um, programmable via Visilogic. What the Samba is going to offer you is a seven inch, a 4.3 inch, or a 3.5 inch touchscreen um, with a smaller amount of memory and screens available for a more cost effective option. Um, in 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 different applications right so uh it, it again it uses the same software package uh you actually have the ability to uh import and export routines from the vision to the samba and so on so it it's it's easily translatable since it is the same software package some features for these again the size range 3.5 to 7 inch offers a quality colored touchscreen and also implements a lot of the same features that the Vision does as well, just on a smaller scale. So you have the ability to implement multi-languages, not as many as the, as the Vision series, but you do have the ability to have a multilingual application. You also have built-in alarms available. Your IO options include digital, analog, and high speed. Um, you would not have inherent weight measurement uh, available uh, unless you went in a roundabout way of uh, expanding with the EXRC1. You also have auto-tune PID up to two independent loops. So again, you have the features, right, but they're just on a smaller scale, two independent loops as opposed to 24. You have recipe and data logging via data tables, but as an asterisk, right, you do not have SD card capabilities with these guys. So if you need to push or pull from an SD card for any reason, that's automatically going to uh, eliminate the Samba as an option. So it truly is a vision series unit on a, on a smaller scale with, with, with limited capabilities. And then you also have uh, function blocks for a lot of the features that are offered in um, the Visilogic software package. Now the communication ports are also a little bit different, right? For built-in, for the 4.3 inch and the seven inch, you are only going to come with a mini USB standard, and that's just for programming. If you needed to implement any sort of communication to different devices, you would actually have to add a port out of the box in order to be able to communicate with that device. For the 3.5 inch, you do have an RS-232 that comes standard, but if you needed 485 or Ethernet, you would have to add that, and then also you have the ability to add a CAN bus port on all those models as well. So just be weary of the model that you're choosing. Um, depending on the size, it may not come 
with a standard serial port like the rest of the Vision Series units do. In protocols, you have the ability to, like again, once the proper ports are installed, you have Modbus serial and TCP. You have CAN bus protocols like CAN Open, UniCAN, CAN Layer 2. You also have the ability to communicate with the different gateways that we offer, BACnet, KNX, and MBUS. And then function block protocol is available as well. So if you needed, uh, let's just say if you had a small application where um, you need to communicate with a barcode reader, depending on how you were going to communicate with it, you add the port, you build the communication using FB protocol, and that's going to give you the ability to pull in barcodes and use them throughout the rest of the project. Some other features, right? You have email and SMS once uh, a modem or an Ethernet port is fitted. And then you have remote access utilities available as well if you needed to monitor locally and truly remote as if uh, as if you were offsite you can implement port forwarding to to view that uh, hmi display now um a fairly new feature right samba and vision now supports the re the the remote slice ethernet io so you do have the ability to use our slice io with the Vision and Samba series now. So again, if you have a situation where this might be used, unless you are using the V700, you will have to add an ethernet port. Uh, on the couplers themselves, they're gonna come with two ethernet ports. You have the ability to add up to 63 IO modules per adapter, right? Uh, one of the standout features with these guys, we have a lot of different I.O. configurations, but if you needed more than 14-bit analog resolution, this would be your only current option. You would have to move to the remote Ethernet slice I.O. The operating temperature is negative 40 degrees C to 70 degrees C, so it's a decent uh, range. And it's also compatible with all three families. You have the Unistream, Vision, and Samba that can now work with these. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, sum up some of the points we talked about. Why Unitronics, right? All in one PLC with HMI, you can deliver a single compact device for both display and control. And that can be at the face of the panel and also uh, remotely. So you do have the ability to control these remotely with a smartphone, tablet, or PC. You also have a complete range of PLCs. You can get the exact PLC and IO configuration for the solution for your project at hand. Also, in combination with the HMI, the PLC, and the IO, you have a full range of VFDs and servo available for open and cl closed loop control. Powerful software and utilities, intuitive software, again, at no extra cost. You can go ahead and download these right after this presentation ends. Uh, and you'll see that there's nowhere that introduces any sort of licensing or licensing fees. Um, all it is is just a click from the website and you can you can start to explore any of those software or software utilities. And last but not least, outstanding support. You have you can access you, you can access personalized expert su support with no fees or tiers. If you guys call in or if you email in, you will literally get a response for it from me or my colleague Zach or any other one of the colleagues in the office uh, without any sort of uh, jumping through hoops, if you will, right? So you're never gonna have to wait until a project is a certain size or anything like that. You can call you can call in and, and, and we can discuss just the, the very beginning steps of a, of a project if, if that's needed. So there's no sort of fees or tiers or anything like that. If you have a question, feel free to call whenever. Okay, um, so that is all I have for uh, boring slideshow material. I am now going to jump into the software. So this is what the Visilogic programming environment looks like. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start a new project. This is a blank project anyway, but just to start from scratch, I just wanna show you what is gonna happen on the very first instance, you go to open up a new project. So I'm gonna to go to project, new. And you'll see that the very first screen or menu that I am greeted with is the hardware configuration menu. Now the hardware configuration menu, right? Again, you don't, this is gonna pop up 
immediately when you open up a new project, it is not the only time you have the ability to select the hardware configuration. You have the ability to go back into this and change the controller as needed, change the I.O. configuration as needed. Um, I know that there are obviously situations where you might think that you have the I.O. configuration handled and then it comes up where you need maybe two or three more analog inputs or another digital output. You name it, you have the ability to, to add it at a later time, if you will, right? So uh, I'm just going to poke through some of the options here. For the vis if, if you have a Vision Series controller, you want to make sure that you choose this Vision tab. You'll have enhanced and standard series controllers available. So anything that is a Vision Series controller is gonna be available in this tab. If you were working with the Samba, you're gonna come down here and choose the Samba series. You'll see the three different options you have here. I right now have a V1040 selected, right? Which by default does not come with an IO configuration. So if I wanted to add an I.O. configuration, I would choose snap in I.O., right? If I didn't have one, I could choose none because that is possible. You can just use the HMI and PLC. Let's just say if you wanted to control a device via Ethernet or serially, you have the ability to do so. You also have I.O. expansions, right? So let's just say if you wanted to move beyond the the, the built-in or snap-in configuration that you have, what you can do is you can go to IO expansions and depending on what is needed for the application, you have the ability to add a number of IO modules to the current project. Now, when you add IO modules in the hardware configuration for VisiLogic, what the controller is assuming is that you are physically connected to an EX A2X with the cable that comes for that adapter, right? So as long as you have your IO configuration in the same exact order as the physical chain, um, these are essentially, or this situation is essentially going to be plug and play, right? So as you download, so long as the order matches, uh, everything is going to be Okay, right, if you have um, an EX RC1, let's just say if it's remote, right, you actually have to build a project for the remote adapter, and that is going to allow you to communicate back and forth with the unit. Now, if you have uh, a VFD in the project, what you can do is in the hardware configuration, just add it here, and you can configure it in this menu. I'm just gonna pop back up to the Vision Series and I just wanna show you what happens when you choose a built-in configuration model, right? So the V430, these are not snap-ins. So once you choose the 430, it's gonna prompt you to choose a model. The B1 does not have any IO, it's just gonna be the HMI and PLC, so you do have that option if you don't need IO. And if you have an I.O. configuration, you would just go ahead and choose it. And that is going to bring you to a menu where you have the ability to determine what I.O. is going to be used. So if we have analog inputs, you'll see that this model offers two. We have the ability to choose the signal type. And then also choose a filter if needed. So this is how we determine the hardware configuration for the application at hand. And again, you do not have to do everything immediately when you open up the software. You can always go back and revisit this menu. So I'm gonna choose okay and get out of here. And you'll see that it's going to adjust the HMI size based on the unit that we choose. Okay, so now I'm just gonna explore some of these options that we have in the main window. I'm gonna start with project project, you're going to have the ability to open up a new project, open up an existing project, right? And that can be from a PC or a flash stick inserted in the PC and so on. You have the ability to save this project. You can print. You can import displays and routines, right? So you have the ability to export displays and routines from other projects and import them into your project. You have the ability to create project files if you wanted to create like a clone file or if you want to create a cache file for images, you have the option to do so. You have the ability to create a ladder password. And I'm going to jump into properties quick. 
if you needed to password protect an upload, you can go ahead and check this box. And this way, if you enable password upload, the user who is uploading will still have to enter a password. So that is your way to basically password or, or protect with security um, the, the project that is downloaded to the controller if you need upload capabilities. I'm gonna jump to colors real quick. Everything in the Visualogic software has a default color. This is where you can change it. One of the colors um, that I wanna point out is when you are using online test mode or the diagnostic mode for the ladder logic, right? PowerFlow is gonna be in red. You have the ability to change that to any other color if, if need be. The edit drop-down menu, this is where we have some tools that will allow us uh, to navigate different portions of the project. Let's just say if we wanted to search the project by uh, a certain bit that's being used, right? We can do a find operand or a control F. This is gonna allow us to choose the operand that we wanna find. When we press okay, it will show us all of the locations in this menu down here and we can go ahead and skip to different pieces where different pieces of the project where that operand is located. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because we're gonna uh, do a little bit more um, with memory in the next session. The view menu is going to be your uh, project map, if you will. It's really going to be almost like a second instance of the solution tree, which I'm gonna get to in a minute. This is where we can pull back our hardware configuration if we need to add or make changes. You have a data table editor, alarm configurator, string library, web server configura uh, configurator, and so on. Um, you also have the ability to close out of different menus and toolbars. So you'll see if I ever had to close out of this menu, maybe if I'm working with a small uh, PC screen, if I close out of that, I can bring it back with these options down here. Insert is if I wanted to comment uh, any portion of the project. If I wanted to add a new group of displays or subroutines, I have the ability to do so here. Build is where my compile tool is, my build all tool, and also my projected memory map. So the projected memory map is gonna allow me to see um, how much space I've used and how much space I still have according to the project that I am creating. So that's a neat tool, especially if you think you're getting up into the, the ceiling of memory, uh, this is gonna allow you to just double check how much you have left. Ladder and HMI, depending on where you are in the project, right here we're on the HMI portion, um, this is gonna give me a number of different options I have to size elements, align elements, group elements, show a grid to line uh, different elements up. You also have a toolbar down here based on where you're at in the software that is gonna give you a lot of the elements in this HMI dropdown. I skip connection, we're gonna, we're gonna come back to it. Tools, this is where your PID server is. Uh, located, you also have a BACnet configurator if you're using the BACnet gateway. If you are sending uh, a customer a compressed project for download with Uni Downloader, this is where your da Uni Download Designer is located. And last but not least is the Help tab, right? So the Help tab is going to give you a number of different uh, utilities. If you needed to see what version you are currently using or what version is currently installed, you have the ability to go to about down the bottom and this is gonna give you the current version that you're using. If you wanted to view the help tab, you can go ahead and click help. If I needed to search, let's just say a different topic like SD, I have the ability to use that search bar. It's gonna fill in with the number of relevant topics. You could just double click on the topic needed and you're gonna have a write up for whatever feature you're searching for. So the help tab, uh, the, well the help tab, but the help file is a, is a great tool. If you're trying to implement maybe a function block or some sort of protocol that you've never used before, you're typically gonna have at least a, a write-up or some sort of structure instructions on how to implement that. And also you have a full examples library included with the software package itself. So you have project examples, 
and you'll see a number of topics that you can actually pull up a pre-built project that you can use as uh, a skeleton to build your project off of or if you just wanted to see uh, how to implement a certain topic you have the ability to open that up and, and scroll through now connection last but not least this is where you're going to have a lot of your uh, primary tools for the software you have online test mode you have download options right so let's just say if you wanted to download download with the reset if you wanted to burn your project to the controller and if you wanted to give upload capabilities you have these four different options available if you wanted to perform an upload or if you wanted to verify if your project open in the pc window is the same as the controller you're connected to you have the verify tool you have modem services if you've added a 3g modem and then last but not least, you have communication in OS. Your communication in OS menu is going to show you your connection settings, right? If I have a controller that I want to connect to via serial, right, you have serial and then a number of Ethernet options. If we want to make a call to a PLC or listen and wait for a PLC to make a connection to us, we have the ability to do so. When you are going to connect to your unit serially for the first time, on this tab chances are com one is not going to be the pc port that you're using so you're going to go to this last tab here for usb installation you can install a usb driver once it's installed it's going to be listed in your device manager under ports common lpt so you'll see you have my prolific to usb uh i'm sorry usb to serial com port is on com4 I can then use this virtual COM port number in order to make a connection to my unit over serial. So if I go back into connection, and change my COM number to four, You'll see that I have connection to my unit that I am physically connected to serially uh, at my desk here. Now, if I wanted to communicate with a unit over Ethernet, right, I could change my type to TCP IP call. This is going to allow me to reach out and establish a connection with a unit over Ethernet. All I have to do here is go in and insert the IP address of the panel I would like to connect to, and then also the PLC name which you have the ability to control on your own with a function block. If you do not give it a name, it's going to manually or automatically assign it uh, with a random number of digits that can be used as the PLC name. It almost acts as the password for ethernet connectivity. And you'll see now if I hit get OPLC information, I'm now connected to a, a different unit over ethernet. Also in this menu, you have a number of different functions, right? So in testing or in troubleshooting, a number of different reset options are available that might uh, turn up as useful. You have a run command, stop command. You also have a reset command to um, turn off and on the PLC. And then you also have an initialize and reset, which will perform a reset and also zero out all memory. So it's a nice uh, troubleshooting tool. You typically don't want to use that guy in runtime. And then also, if you need to update the operating system, you have the ability to check. And if you have connection to a unit, right? You have uh, a menu that's going to pop up here and either introduce the install wizard or it's going to tell you that the PLC system is up to date. We're up to date so we don't have to do anything. We can go ahead and hit finish. So that's just a quick intro to the number of tabs that you have up here at the top. I just want to point out the solution tree and then the output window and then I'll be able to take any questions that you guys have. So the solution tree, right? This is uh, a lot of the options that you'll see in the view menu. You have a tree on the left that's just going to make it very easy to navigate back and forth through the project. If you need to pull the hardware configuration back up, you can go ahead and just click on hardware configuration. That is going to bring you back to the menu that you saw at the beginning here for choosing your I.O. configuration. 
You then have the ability to jump back and forth between ladder and HMI. You can set up any built-in alarms that you have for the project. Any trending that you want to do, you'll see that you have eight trends available. Each trend can have eight curves, so you have 64 curves available for a project of this size. And then your string library, right, depending on the controller model you have, these are the number of different languages or unit changes that you can implement. So in the V430, you only have four. Uh, if you were to use one of the larger size panels, you would have eight. And down the bottom, you have web service and data tables. One thing on the web server feature, um, we'll probably touch more on this in communications, uh, but you have, with the Vision Series, you have simple web server and advanced web service. Simple, uh, you have a predefined Unitronics template and you just choose the operands that you want to display on the web page. The advanced web server allows you to literally build um, a web page or web browser with HTML and you can use anything from custom images to videos and so on. You just have to have a uh, all those files accessible on the SD card of the unit in the web folder. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll touch on that again in the uh, communications portion of the webinar series. Last but not least, I just want to point out the operands tab at the bottom. This is where your predefined memory map lies. So unlike the Unistream series, you do have a predefined memory map with the Vision series, and this is where you have the ability to explore what's in use and what you still have available. Uh, we're going to go way more in depth in the next session uh, with memory. This again was just more of, a, of an introduction to the software package itself. Um, before we wrap up today, I wanna show you guys where you can find this software. If you go to unitronicsplc.com on the web, you're gonna have a software dropdown menu where you can choose Visilogic. On this Visilogic page, you have the ability to download the latest version, you also can access previous versions. And down the bottom, you have software utilities for all those utilities that I had mentioned. So remote access, OPC server, uh, Uni Downloader, they're all gonna be located in the Visilogic software page. All right, um, I appreciate you guys uh, listening in. I'm gonna take some questions now. So if you guys want to go ahead and, okay. So um, I have a question here. The remote IO adapter ethernet works with vision and Sama models. The answer is yes. You have the ability to use those URB adapters with both the vision and Sama models. Um, I know that there's more questions here. That's um, the only question that I can see. Okay. Can this all-in-one PLC system be used in CNC machines? And if yes, which type of Visilogic is recommended? So the answer to that one is 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 not specifically we're really not meant for uh cnc machines for um you know in, in, in interpolation if you will um you do have the ability to add three servos with the vision series right so anyone that has a CAN bus port uh you can add the communication for um three axes of motion um, but they're really not meant for CNC type applications, unfortunately. Okay, another one is the EX A2X used for remote IO. Um, so when when I say remote IO, 
uh, I actually th there's there's really three different avenues that you have with with the Vision Series units, right? You have the EXA2X, which is expansion but locally, right? So if if you're going to be within uh, a certain range, let's just say you're within 20 meters, you're going to have the EXA2X available because you have cable lengths that are going to be that long, right? If you're any longer than that, you're going to have to move to the EX RC1 which is going to allow you to be up to a thousand meters away but that is not as easily implemented as the exa2x the exa2x is really like um plug and play whereas the exrc1 is literally unican communication over can bus from the adapter to the controller and then you also have the remote slice io and that is uh the ethernet based coupler so you can use that with the with the slice io so you have three different flavors if you will of expansion you have the exa2x exrc1 and the urb uh, adapter okay another question how can i add a servo into the vision series all right great question uh we're going to go over that more in depthly uh in the communications portion um you saw that in the hardware configuration, you can add a VFD to the hardware configuration. You do not do that with the servo. The servo, you actually have function blocks for implementing or initializing the port for can open communication with the servo, and then you just determine uh, the node numbers up to three. And again, we'll we'll touch on that a little more in the in the communications uh, in week four, the fourth install of of this series. Uh, I got one, please give me models of ethernet modems that I can use with the Samba. Um, I wanted to take this question because we we aren't really able to offer true recommendations for exactly what hardware to use that is not ours. Um, but in, in cases where ethernet modems are used, from a PLC standpoint, it is literally just communicating with another device that would be over ethernet. So um, I have not seen one that doesn't work, if, if that helps. Um, let's see, can we expand IO in Samba? So yes, you can. Uh, and you would do that with the remote slice IO. You do not have EX A2X capabilities with the Samba. And in order to use the EX RC1, you would have to add the CAN bus port. And then you also have programming to make those two communicate. So it just gets into a situation where additional hardware might make it more, it might make more sense to just start off with the Vision Series unit, right? But you do have the ability to expand with the remote IO. Can I upload V130 program into a laptop? Yes, you do have the ability to do so. In the software, in the connection drop-down menu, you have an upload option. Um, one thing with the upload, though, is whoever downloads to the controller has the ability to disable upload capability. If you do not use that fourth option in the list, the burn upload project, you are disabling the upload capability. So you do not have the ability and we don't have any backdoor password or any way to get the, the, the project out. Um, you have a couple of different ways to, if you don't wanna implement like the ability to upload, you can still implement cloning features, which would allow you to move the project from controller to controller, but you would never be able to open it and view it. On the small HMI, can I have Ethernet and serial port as the two optional ports? Yes, so uh, in the Vision series, right, you are going to have the units that come with uh, serial ports and you can add an Ethernet port. In the Samba series, let's just say if you have a 4.3 or a seven inch, right, you only have the ability to add either or. So it all depends on the controller that you're that you're going with. So again, a lot of a lot of times what drives the the selection of the controller that you'd want to use is is your communication uh, requirements, right? So if you know that you need to communicate over Ethernet, let's just say if you need to communicate over a certain protocol, uh, that's going to drive you into a certain controller family that we offer. 
is the vision series the only one with GSM? How do you specify, specify this for purchase? So we actually have a 3G modem kit that is the only serial modem that we can officially say that we support, and that can be used for vision or Samba. Um, IoT available on Unitronics, the answer to that would be yes, all depending on what you need to do, right? So the Vision and Samba series don't offer uh, a lot of the industry 4.0 protocols like the Unistream does, right? So depending on what is needed, right? Let's just say if you want to host a web page or have the ability to um, communicate with like a SCADA system or something like that. Typically you can use the Vision or the Samba series, but if you wanted to be able to uh, use MQ MQTT or SQL or file transfer protocol, typically you're gonna get pushed, I mean, for the most part, you're gonna get pushed into the Unistream series. But but is IoT available on Unitronics? The answer to that question would be yes. Okay, model V130, is it a vision model? Yes, so um, the enhanced, what I mean by standard versus enhanced, uh, I should have made this more of a point. Um, standard series is uh, the older, almost monochrome type HMI displays that do not offer SD card capabilities. The enhanced series offers SD card capabilities and a, a colored touchscreen. The V130 is one of those weird, gray area situations where it is still an enhanced vision series model because it gives you SD card capabilities, uh, but it is not touchscreen. Is the M90 going to be discontinued anytime soon? Are there any, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be discontinued per se. Um, there are only a handful of models that we've discontinued just because there are a lot of users who use the M90. So I don't think it's gonna be discontinued anytime soon, but we absolutely do have other 12 volt options. Um, if you take a look at the catalog online, you'll see uh, which ones are offered for 12 volt and 24 volt. Uh, missed Tuesday's Unistream, is there a link? So I just wanna address this real quick. We are absolutely going to have these uh, recordings available. Um, if you need those links at any time, they should be available on the website. If you're having trouble finding them, just shoot an email into support uh, and just let us know what session you need and we can absolutely provide that link for you. Is Unitronics thinking about adding Profinet, Profinet protocol um no nothing that i've heard specifically um we do offer a profibus port for the vision series units but again it's an additional port that you would have to add i have not i have not heard anything in the pipeline for adding um profinet or anything like that the, the question says for unistream series the the answer is is I, i'm not sure what is in what is in the the pipeline or what the future holds for for profinet let's see what else we have here um are you implementing two uh, are you planning to implement a program simulation in Invisilogic? Uh, I do not know what is in the future for simulation. As of right now, you need to have the hardware and use online test mode in any one of the utilities like remote access or remote operator to view the screen. Can Visilogic be configured to run without admin rights on the computer? So the answer to that is a little bit tricky, right? Um, Windows 10 inherently in, it introduces a lot of layered security-based issues that can, not, not, not real issues, features that can interrupt how our software runs. So you would wanna run it with admin rights um, in almost all cases, we do have uh, specific versions that you can run without admin rights. So if that is needed, send an send an email into support, uh, and we'll be able to 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 get you one of those versions. Um, the newest the, the the newer versions too. You can you can always try those with without 
admin rights. Uh, if you have any specific like runtime messages that pop up, shoot us a picture of it. And, and we can typically make some suggestions that might be able to get you around it, but in general, you would typically want to run with admin. Uh, I got a question here, 5G. Um, we do not have anything in the, the, the pipeline serially. Um, if you wanted to communicate with an ethernet modem, and again, this is, I guess it's my, my ignorance for the time being. I don't know of, um, any any specific ethernet modems that offer that right now but if it's ethernet based you do have the ability to communicate with ethernet based third party modems um with any of our controllers with ethernet capabilities what other hardware is required for remote access with the samba series depending on the the version of remote you need right if it's serial um you would basically just need your, uh, your 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 programming cable connected. If you have something that is more remote, you may need port forwarding involved, right? So if you're off-site, that is going to have to be connected over Ethernet to a router um, that has a local area network address and a wide area network address, and you basically just connect on the wide end, and you for and you basically direct traffic to the to the local end. Is the software really free? Uh, go to the website and download it. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> is structured text going to be introduced soon? Um, I have not heard of, of anything um, that is in the pipeline for that, unfortunately. Max size for SD card, great question. So we actually have a max and min size. Min is four gigs. Uh, and, and I'm air quoting, the supported range is 4 gigs to 32 gigs for, for the Vision Series controllers. Uh, Visilogic have default objects for something or drawings like pumps. So we actually have, and, and when we go into the HMI portion next week, um, I'm going to show you guys how to pull from the library that is downloaded with the software, right? You also have the ability, depending on the file type, to implement your own um, custom images. So uh, you basically have the ability to use any sort of pumps that we have that are pre-existing or ones that you want to pull from either the web or Photoshop or something like that. Uh, could I review the webinar in the future? Again, we're going to have these available for uh, review at a later time. Okay, why two softwares, Unilogic and Visilogic, will be wise to integrate both into one? The reason for that is uh, the difference in controller families. You do not have uh, the capabilities or, or some of the capabilities that the, that the Unistream offers in the Vision series. Um, the reason for two different software packages is depending on, uh, let me just say this, another question that we get a lot of time is, is can we um, basically update the project from Visilogic into Unilogic? Uh, you do not have the ability to do so and it, because it is too fully different software packages that really don't have any relation to one another um, based on the controller series that you go with that is going to determine the software package that you need can i have more visilogic versions on my pc absolutely right so you have the ability to download as many versions as you like let's just say if you have a couple of different installations in the field, all of them which you downloaded to with different versions of Visilogic, you can have all those versions. You have uh, in your Unitronics Visilogic underscore C folder, you have a version swapper utility that allows you to register what you want your current version to be. You also have the ability to have two independent instances of Visilogic for the same version open at the same time. Uh, the way to do that is, again, in the Visilogic underscore C folder in Unitronics, if you just copy that entire folder and paste it right below itself, it's going to give you Visilogic underscore C dash copy. Both of those are going to have a main directory, and both of those are going to have a, a Visilogic executable.
Um, I have no question here. It's just very lit. Yes, it is. Hi, can I connect Ethernet IO expanders via a router? Okay, so um, there are a lot of cases that I have seen, right, where you have um, communication to different devices over Ethernet in uh, different places, right? So, so long as you can get access or connection to that particular um, expander if you will i mean yeah it, you just need the 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 proper um it work if if you will can we expand io for samba again uh the slice io is how you would want to do it uh what is the difference between okay great question what is the difference between download and download and burn okay download right is going to be the the first two options that that i typically and i'm going to just show you guys these the first two options that i see download and stop download reset those two options are going to be what you want to use in troubleshooting right or if you're just making a quick change to a project and you want to see how that change is implemented in the project if you will download all and burn and burn upload project are going to burn the project to the flash memory in cases where you have either a unit in transit if you have violent shock violent vibration in the area a lot of times that type of scenario can cause the project to be lost burning the project to flash memory protects you from those scenarios so i always say that when you're testing and developing download stop download reset are what you want to use download all and burn and burn load burn upload project are, are your final download options um, as you download to a controller the last download proper uh, the last download properties get erased with a new download um, so you always want a burn to be your last option before you either install or ship a unit out if that if that makes sense and again burn upload project is the only option out of those four that give you the ability to pull the project out at a later time if you want to password protect you have the ability in uh the the options for the software Okay, I'm gonna take a couple more questions and then anything I don't get to guys, just feel free to uh, shoot it into support as a, as a question later on and, and I'd be happy to, to, to get a response to you. Um, does Visilogic support C language programming? The Unistream does, the Vision Series or Visilogic does not. Is there connection support for Schneider drives? Uh, we're going to deal with a lot of these scenarios in the communications portion. It is really going to come down to the protocol that's being used. Is there a model with three snap-in analog outputs? I have a catalog right here. Let me confirm for you. Yes, uh, the E3 XB, the E4 XB are both going to give you four. What do you mean by plug and play? Okay, so plug and play, what I mean all, basically, if you have the physical configuration match up with what is in the hardware configuration, um, you don't have to do any extra programming outside of determining what inputs, outputs, and MIs are in use. And again, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll do more in the, in the, in the ways of memory next week and then in the next thursday session you'll see I, I think that a lot more of those things will become clear once i show you like ladder navigation um but that pl plug and play truly means just you just want to make sure the physical chain lines up with what you have in the hardware configuration I got one here. Do timers count down or does it count up? Very, very good question. When you have a timer in the logic, right? Um, you basically set a preset and then you have a current time for which the timer is at. You always want to think as the timer is counting down, you can show it as counting up on screen. So if you have a scenario where you want to show like total elapsed time, you want to give the preset time the max amount of time possible. 
and that way you do not count up and hit a predetermined preset time by accident. Uh, a couple more questions. Do you guys offer programming classes or courses? So we actually have a number of tutorials available online. Um, if those do not satisfy what is needed, feel free to shoot us an email. We can always do uh, or, or provide you some sort of material that would pertain more to an application that you have. We also do, I know that COVID is kind of, uh interrupted this whole year if you will right but we actually have uh, a number of weeks that we do five day courses that do unilogic and visilogic all in one week so just keep an eye out for those once everything starts to get back to normal and and if one is is uh in your area that would um most likely be the one that you want to go to we also do offer on-site trainings uh if that's needed if if that's something that's desired shoot us an email and we can pass it to the proper channels uh, is the Unitronics in the cannabis industry? Yes, it is. Um, can we use a Samba for a large machine? Absolutely. The reason why we say small to medium-sized applications uh, is because it's a limited amount of memory. If you can handle the entire project, it really doesn't matter how big the machine is. Uh, you just have to make sure that that controller model can satisfy the I.O. requirement and the memory and communication requirement. Okay, stepper motor control and programming directly with a stepper drive. Um, when we take a look in the next couple of sessions at function blocks and so on, um, you have the 130, 350, and V430 that come in dash TR models. All of those models support built-in um, PTO for, for step control. All the other models, you have the ability to build it from scratch, but it's a little bit more tedious and, and ladder intensive. Can we download a program at a remote location? Absolutely, so long as you have the ability for connection, right? If you have port forwarding set up, uh, let's just say if you want to set up remote access, that is going to be the same channels that you would be able to connect and, and download as well. Can I communicate Modbus and CAN bus at the same time? Absolutely, Modbus is gonna be done serially or over ethernet. Uh, a CAN bus protocol is going to be done on a different port so it will not interfere. What is online test? Online test mode, we're actually gonna look at it uh, in next week's session way more in depth, right? I'm gonna show you how to, how to view the power flow through a particular net. Online test is um, a programmer's tool for troubleshooting and just seeing the flow of, of logic throughout um, that particular net or routine. Uh, I'm going to just browsing through. I'm going to take one more question and then I'm going to call it. Okay, I got one. What, what do I need to add more alarms on Visilogic, right? So um, depending on how you want to implement your alarms, you have your alarm feature over here. Um, I see in a lot of cases that alarms are built manually as well, right? So not using the built-in form. Um, you have the ability in the Vision series to implement over like a thousand displays, right? So depending on what the alarm is, you can have the trigger either kick to one display specifically, or you can have like 50 or 60 different alarm screens that can that can be pulled, you know, just because you have the amount of 
uh, HMI displays at your disposal, uh, but it really all depends on on the application and, and, and what's needed to, 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 be, to be handled. All right, guys, that's, that's it for uh, session one on Visilogic's portion. Um, again, any questions that I didn't get to, feel free to shoot into the support box. We'll be able to, uh, to get you some, some replies on those and make sure that you tune in next Tuesday uh, for Zach's Unilogic presentation. This, um, this recording will be available. Uh, it should be put on the web once it is. If anybody is having trouble finding it, feel free to shoot us uh, an email and we can get you a copy of it. Thank you.